this video we want to do a bit of theory in advance um, to understand uh, the lectures or the lecture stuff that will come um, ahead. And we will start with the model representation that we will use for multiple input, multiple output control. And for this we will use another example than you saw in the previous video. Um, so within this video you could imagine one transfer function from u1 to y1 and but there are way more interactions because this is a more complicated system that we would assume and yeah now it's, it's the big question compared to um, single output single input um, how can we uh, write this down as uh, uh, within the model representation and that is the first first thing we want to analyze i want to discuss so what is the model representation That's one big part and that will be uh, quite easy for you because it's not much more difficult than uh, for a single input, single output. Um, actually, we have just to in, uh, introduce a higher dimension. So sc uh, scalar values will be vectors and vectors will um, be matrix um, afterwards. Um, so we actually say um, this ye is not um, anymore uh, a single value, it's a vector. So we can say ye as a vector. And how do we calculate this? Um, in single output, single input, we want to, would use um, transfer function, maybe um, gj. Um, um, and in this time, it's not um, uh, a single value or a single function, it's a, a matrix. So it has a higher dimension. And we want to uh, multiply this by the input values, u, e. And they are uh, no single scalar values uh, anymore too. So they are vectors as well. So actually that's it. You would write down a vector from y1 to um, y, yj. And here you would have a matrix from uh, g11, um, g, uh, jj, and here the interactions and in the diagonal points you would say uh, would see the direct um, influence so this would be these values the direct interaction and on the other parts you would see the, the um, yeah the, the coupled interactions like uh, g11 or uh, g12 or g21 yeah, and for you the same um, as for y um, applies. So you would have um, u1 and then uj. Yeah, that's actually your model representation and that's uh, nothing too difficult, I think. Um, now we switch to something completely different, differently. So now we will uh, introduce the relative gain array that you might not, not have heard um, of, but we need to discuss this um, and I will describe why, um, why we do so. So relative gain array, or in short, um, RGA. What is it? Well, as I mentioned before, we need some kind of measure how strong this, um, this interaction between um, both control loops actually is. And therefore, multiple ways exist. There are a um, couple um, matrices and something else. And in this video, we want to describe um, out of this box of matrix uh, the relative um, gain array. 
And that will give us a an, an measure how big this interaction actually is. So first we want to describe what it is. Let's write this down. So the gain array, um, it, it's the relative gain. So the relative gain between what? Between the output. So between the output. Um, so when we assume, um, we want to call it lambda. So and for example, lambda 1, 1. And this is the relative gain um, between the output um, y1 and the input u1. So, and that's something we can write down in a mathematical way. Um, um, and that will, that's what we do. Um, it has a definition. And this lambda can be calculated as follows. So it will be a matrix with dimensions ij. And that is a partial ye over um, uj for all loops open. For open loops, and we divide it. We will we we will divide this by partial y e over u j. Um, all loops open except. Um, except this uj loop. So this is important and that's how we uh, would write down the um, uh, mathematically. Um, what, what, will you, what will we get? Um, this measure provides, oh, it provides a measure It provides a measure of the influence um, of interactions and more precisely of process interact interactions. And we can calculate this lambda um, differently. So this is the pure mathematical definition, but in real life we would um, perform in another way. We would use um, the following calculation. So we would say this lambda, and it's dependent from a variable that we will consider soon. Um, it's dependent from k and we say it's k times um, k inverted and the inverted part we want to transpose. So that's, that's actually it. And this dependence from k, what is k? Um, K can be um, assumed and in the literature it has been shown that a good measure for K is um, this uh, limb from G uh, for S goes to zero. So that is what we can use. And that is the, the pure um, calculation that we can uh, use when the transfer function j is known, then we can just use this calculation and then we have it. And well, what, what is when those transfer function do not uh, are not access, uh, accessible for us? Then we have to determine this, um, this, this value lambda in a different way. And um, this is done by interaction analysis.
So interaction analysis. Um, and this is this is necessary when transfer uh, when this transfer matrix um, J is not known. So it needs to be this way. So when J is not known, then we have to perform interaction analysis, and that's what we will do in the uh, yeah in the in the next part of this video. Mm -hmm.